Hello and welcome back. I'll be making a potion slash apothecary set, as well as talking about combustion of different fuels later in the video, here on the Matt Yasa channel. I'll go ahead and pull some glass out of an area here to thin it. That way I can rip it open in the flame. Well, let's go ahead and move the glass over a little bit and then it'll rip right open. You can see the inside ends just instantly covered in water vapor. When the flame entered into the tubing, it immediately evaporated all the moisture there and also created some different types of gases, which we'll be talking about later in the video. But the reason I'm using this technique is because the tube on one end is closed already, and the other end is jagged, so I can't really blow into it. Or else I would have blown out the end and then flame cut the middle. But there's always multiple ways to get to the same destination. But now I'm cleaning up the ends for a blow tube attachment. I'm removing a little bit of glass, moving some glass around. This is just some basic prep work before I actually get into shaping the bottles. My clear glass starts off as five foot tubes and rods. So there's usually a lot of prep work involved. And now I'll switch over to my Jax tool to flare open the end. This is a more traditional glass blowing tool and definitely one of my favorites. It's coated with a little bit of beeswax to keep it from sticking. And so this 12 millimeter tubing will be the blow tube and handle for the project. It's roughly half the size and thickness of the larger tube. And now the inspiration for this project actually comes from my little niece. She likes to pretend to make magic potions. She's been using a jar that I made a long time ago when I first started practicing lamp working. It's a pretty bad one too. I'll go ahead and show you at the end of the video so you can see how far I've gone since the beginning. It's been a good journey so far in lamp working and on YouTube. I've learned quite a lot and gotten a lot of good comments over the years. I think I've helped a few people get started, uh, at least helped a few along the way. And that's what's important to me is inspiring others. And not just in glass, but in other creative art forms or just generally as well. And so I was heating both tubes to very molten and attached them in the flame. It made a very nice hot seal. I want to make sure to hold my hands very level as it sets up so it's not off center. I'll remove a little bit of glass to pop out another hole. That way I can do another blow tube attachment. After that, I'll cut the tube in half and end up with two blanks. A blank is a manufacturing term to create the basic form of the product, but not finalize the shape, the details. Coins, for example, will be cut out as blank discs first and then pressed between two dies to stamp the details into the coin. And so you can manufacture your blanks ahead of time if you prefer. They'll have a better chance to survive the cooling process if you prop them upright. You might be able to stack them in a warm kiln to help them cool down slower, but you wouldn't really need to run an annealing cycle they will retain a little stress, but you can just work that out the next time you heat it up. 
And so this is the first time back on the torch in over a month. My studio doesn't have any heating, so it gets quite cold. The torch doesn't warm things up that well. As I have a strong ventilation system going, it's pulling all the hot air outside. And so I was thinking this year, I kind of want to tackle a large project, and that would be to build a new studio. The design I'm thinking would have a smaller area than where I'm at now, but be well insulated. My other complaint is my current studio has no windows. I'm a big fan of nature, so I'd like to see outside while I work. I might also be able to use the natural lighting and scenery for these videos. And in order to get the best of both of those, I'm going to have to probably move it around too. So I might have to build it on wheels. My idea is to start with an inexpensive trailer. I'm not a welder myself, so I think I'll leave the metal foundation to the professionals. But then the framing, the walls, the roof, I want to do all that myself. And so I went ahead and gathered about half of the tube up. I'm going to wait a moment for the heat to balance out and then start to puff out a sphere. And I'm not going to puff it all out in one go. I'll go ahead and heat it back up and give it a couple more puffs here. And so I had a very interesting comment today. Someone was asking if you could run a torch inside of a sandblasting cabinet and to possibly forego a ventilation system and allow the cabinet to trap all the glass debris. And now I'm thinking a small torch might work as long as the cabinet was fireproof. However, you would still need a ventilation system for the hazardous gases created during the combustion process. The combustion process is basically taking a large, heavier molecule and using oxygen to break it down into smaller, lighter molecules. Real quick, I'm flattening the bottom now, but I'm going to heat it back up and suck a little bit of air out. This will cause the bottom to concave inward, giving it a nice rim to sit. And so propane, for example, is a chain of hydrogen and carbon. When we break that down with oxygen, a few of the molecules you may find are carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and even dihydromonoxide, or more commonly referred to as water along with a release of energy in the form of heat and light. And now chemistry isn't my specialty. I believe a 5 to 1 ratio of oxygen to propane would give you the best mix. It should result into three molecules of carbon dioxide and four molecules of water. I popped a hole in the back of the tubing to separate the blow tube without closing it up. I'm going to melt the blow tube off and finish shaping the top of the potion bottle. And now lastly with the ventilation, even though the carbon dioxide isn't poisonous, enough of it can start to displace the oxygen in the room, making it difficult to breathe. And then the carbon monoxide, which is poisonous, would most likely result from an incomplete combustion, along with black soot which is carbon residue, leftover carbon. And so with the cabinet idea, you would still need ventilation, but you could isolate that process so you wouldn't need as much power. It'd be very efficient. I removed a little bit of glass and I'm gonna move some glass around to help balance out this lip here. And now I could have blown the vessel out a little bit larger, I left the walls a little thick, about four millimeters, but they should be a good size for a single dose potion. To make it more of a apothecary set, I'm going to make one more vessel to mix the potion in. 
And now an apothecary is a more traditional word for what you might call a pharmacist or a chemist. Someone who deals in the creation of pharmaceutical items. And I believe some do still practice the techniques of it today. You might refer to them more as home remedies. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply some colored dots to the outside. I'll heat up the end of the rod to molten. And heat up the clear glass a little bit as well. And apply the dot inside of the flame. And I'm kind of pushing it into the clear as I'm applying it. Going for some rather larger dots here. The main goal is to be consistent with the size for all of them. And one thing you might notice as you finish applying the last dot, you might end up with a little string at the end of the rod. It's good to melt that back and shape your rod for the next dot. And that way it pushes out a nice round circle. I switched over to a cadmium yellow. You have to be careful with the brighter cadmium colors. It's better to heat them up farther out in the flame where it's a little cooler and work them a little slower or else they might start boiling on you. And then of course, when the rods get a little short, it's better just to find a piece of scrap glass and punty up to make a little handle. I'm gonna start to slowly melt the dots in further back in the flame, along with bringing the clear glass to molten temperatures. I've had my second stage torch on for this second project. This is a two stage Bethlehem Bravo. I use the smaller center stage for the majority of my videos. Just when I'm working on a larger project like this, where I need a larger area of heat, is when I turn on the outer stage. It does require me to turn on a second oxygen concentrator as well. And so I'm kind of slowly melting the dots in while blowing the sphere out. I'm gonna put a lot of heat into the base and hold it upside down which will allow the bottom of the vessel to concave inward, which will create a solid rim for the vessel to sit on. I'll go ahead and just heat the bottom of the vessel a little bit and punty up with this thin punty. Probably should have gone with a little larger of a punty, but that's okay. I'll go ahead and heat up the neck here and start to pull and puff at the same time. This will help me stretch the neck out without closing it up. This will also thin out the neck, making it easier to pop a bubble to remove the blow tube without closing up the vessel. Sealing up a vessel can be pretty problematic. I plan to demonstrate that in a future video. And now real quick, I could have blown the sphere out first and then applied the dots. I think they might have moved around a little bit while I was puffing the sphere out. And so applying them after would probably better keep their placement, but applying them before makes it a little easier to melt them in. It's good to be versatile with your tools and techniques, but the torch can be pretty versatile as well. It can also burn natural gas and hydrogen which I think is one of the more interesting examples of combustion. The hydrogen and oxygen with a little extra spark of energy will begin to form water. Not only that, you could theoretically recollect that water, give it even more energy with electrolysis and break it back apart into hydrogen and oxygen. And so you would essentially create your own fuel you would always need to keep adding in extra energy in order to separate the water, but then only a little bit of energy to kickstart the combustion process, which releases energy itself, maintaining the combustion until all of the water 
is recreated. So in a way, the water is kind of like a vessel for energy. And now this water vessel is looking complete. I'll just need to knock off the punty, melt in that last punty mark, and then throw it into the kiln at 1050 for about an hour. And here's that old jar I was talking about earlier. It has some problems standing upright. And here's the potion bottle I made today. You can see quite a difference. A good consistency in the wall thickness and the blowout. It also stands upright, no problem. And now for the colorful mixing flask with a spout. I hope you enjoyed this video, but don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss what's coming up here on the Matt Yasa channel.